today we're talking about this CoSense issue with the GP6500s on the Generax. Flash here or flash here. The flash is here. Uh, this is the more frequent thing. Everybody has an issue with going bad. So we're going to talk about how to fix it. We're actually going to walk through the process of doing it. Really simple. Hey guys, Eric with East Texas Homestead here. I got my two younger boys helping me out. So bought this from Lowe's about, uh, I don't know, it was during the Texas snow meltdown, snowmageddon, ice apocalypse, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's got, you can see right there, 39 hours on it. Okay. So basically I ran it to get us through that, that event. Um, and that was, that was about it. Um, it's basically sat in the barn since then. I take it out and I start it every once in a while. Um, took it out this past week and found out that um, it does not stay running. So if you have this issue and you notice that the CoSense right here will flash here or flash here, typically when it flashes here, from what I understand, it's basically saying you have got problems with CO, um, carbon monoxide, and you need to shut it off. When it flashes here, uh, this is the more frequent thing that seems to be everybody has an issue with this thing going bad. So we're gonna talk about how to fix it. We're actually gonna walk through the process of doing it. Really simple. Um, I've seen some people online say they've had it quoted out at $300 to replace this thing. You know, the unit itself, it's a pretty decent sized generator and it carries the name Generac. So it ran us, I think a little over $800 but it was the only thing that we could get. The first thing that we're gonna do is peel off this sticker right here. So once we do that, it's supposed to release, or reveal rather, uh, a couple of screws. And there we go. And there's the, the, the co-sensor um, lights. So I'm gonna take that guy off and just stick it right there. That'll work. Okay, so that is one of those specialty like torque screws or whatever, so I need to go try to find that. Yeah, so you're definitely gonna need this T5. It's got a little hole in it. If you don't have one, just go down to you know, Tractor Supply or um, AutoZone or Walmart, pick one up. If you really wanna buy one on Amazon, I'll put one in the uh, link in the description below. And, uh, you know, it would really help me out. Uh, I'd get, you know, a nickel off of your purchase maybe. Um, but hey, you know, a little bit goes a long way. So um, check that out if you don't already have one. All right, we got Squirt here working, helping me out. All right, let's go here. And, um, okay, that's good. You know, we were just taking it off and realized that it didn't actually show you what the problem is. So I'm gonna try to start it up and I'm gonna show you and um, we'll go from there. So flip it on. You don't need to watch us do this, but I guess so. There you go, hold this. Is that going to I don't know if you saw it, that light flashed about three times Daddy. and then it quit. Why? That's what it does. It just stops. Daddy. All right, got those screws out. Come around here to this other side. I'm sorry, guys. This is super embarrassing. I accidentally hit the button that caused the recording to go picture in picture instead of having two separate recordings. Nothing I can do about it. So this is kind of where we're at. Eh, sorry. Anyway. Back to the video. And now we've got this guy right here. Pop it off. And now we should be able to release it. So I think what's gonna have to happen is I push on these. There's a little tab right here. 
There's a tab right here, and then there's a tab back on this side. Push on the two of them, and it comes apart. And there is the problem, right there. See that drop out? This should be recalled. This is a serious problem, and this is the reason why I'm doing this video, because I want to bring more attention to the fact that this is so cheaply built on an $800 generator that whatever this is, a little capacitor, I don't know what that is, um, this causes people to have issues. So let's see our op what our options are. Okay, real quick, I wanted to show you right here inside, that's where that thing goes. And well, it's gone. So I don't know, you know, I've seen, I saw one guy, he's like, I had 600 hours on here and it just jiggled loose. I don't know if it's that, or I don't know if it's the fact that I had it in my barn and a little bit of heat in the Texas summer made it so that it, uh, the solder melted off, but super cheap, super disappointing. And um, like I said, should be a recall. So next thing we're gonna do is lift this up. We're gonna go ahead and, oh, I guess it's a push. There we go, slide that out. Now, now that we've got this off, everything should work just fine. Hey, well, see. I say everything, let me show you what the problem is. All right, so we got it disconnected. Got it turned on. Uh, probably don't need to choke it. So as you can see, the generator works just fine now that we got rid of the safety sally business. The problem is we can't turn it off. So there is a fix for that. <clears throat> well, let's talk about it. Okay, so this is not the same board that I've seen on others. So it looks like they've even attempted to fix their miserable attempt at a, a safety feature. Tell you what we're going to do. I was gonna pull this thing apart, but let's look at this a little bit. Pull these back. Two, yeah, so we've got two blacks, two blacks, a yellow, and a red. Sorry, over here, two blacks, a yellow, and a red. The yellow, I, I think that should be green. I think the yellow is a ground. The red is a hot. And then the two blacks, I'm not entirely sure what they are. But we're going to test this out with a voltmeter. And then I think what I'm going to do is just jump the black, the two blacks together. And then that should allow the switch to work. So let's try this out. Ooh, it is so loud sitting right here man all right when you are doing this be super careful you don't stick anything into that red 
because that'll that'll get you. It'll get you good. This is not the best solution. So I'm going to try to come up with something a little bit better and see what we can do. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Because this is not a very elegant solution. Um, we've got a nice little plug right here. And this board's already toast. So I'm going to say we take this apart and terminate those two right here, the bottom, and then jump those two together and then tape it all up. Just come in here, snip these off. That works. Now how do I get to the other side? Probably shouldn't just tear this thing up. But like I said, it's already trash. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so. Man, I really should get a tripod. Let's see if I can put this up here. Yeah. All right, you're going to have to trust me. But the ones we're trying to jump are on the hook side. All right, you can see that right there. So that is on this side right here. So it's these long ones that we want. I wonder if we can just pull these. Yeah, look at that. Pull them right out. Ooh, that one just actually came out a lot farther, which is actually pretty sure that's the hot one. I'm happy to get it all the way out. Okay. We could probably drive. You know, we might be able to do, drive this down in here, push that through. Yeah, there we go. Of course, that one dropped out the inside. I'm gonna pull this one back out. All right, <clears throat> so at this point, you need to connect these two together and then tape it off and we're good to go. I'm sure there's a better way to do all this. I'm gonna see if I can't bend this up without loosening it too much. Bend this one up. All right, and then bend them toward each other. You know, and if I was been a little extra, I would definitely put some solder between those two, but I don't have any solder. I should add that to my toolbox. But you know what? I think that is going to be enough of a ground to do what it needs to do. Just trying to make sure it doesn't jiggle apart or anything. I think that's going to be just fine. Now, we don't want it to... Well, I don't know. I was going to say we don't want it to touch something else. Actually, if, if this touches some, you know, the casing or something, 
jiggling around in here, it might end up grounding it out and stopping it. I don't know. Let's let's test that. I'll plug it back in. A little wire tape right there prob probably be good, but let's take that off. Flip that back on. Go back over here. We got gas. All right, so that works. Sweet. Oh, what we're going to do is test it though. Is it really dead that time? <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was uh, afraid of right there. So here's my thought. We put a little bit of um, a little bit of electrical tape around that, zip tie it over here out of the way, and we're gonna be golden. All right, a really junky tape job right there. A little bit of zip tie around the back. Got this hanging out here. At any time we wanted to go back to the CoSense nonsense, we could just pop that right off, plug it in. And if we're concerned about the special sticker, so we want it to look the part, I guess we can one-handed put this back on. It might be better to use two hands at some point. If you're OCD like me, that's probably gonna bug me anyway. So I'll probably just get rid of it. And then let's try it one last time in the on position. That gas, choke it. guys i hope that that helped out um man i'm so glad that this actually works now because i was kind of nervous about the fact that i had an 800 hundred dollar paperweight and i don't have a receipt for it and it was going to cost a couple hundred dollars to get it fixed yeah check out some of these other videos uh, this one's really good and this one's also really good so um check them both out and we'll talk to you on the next one